Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another DP tutorial. Today I'll be walking you through the screener module and explaining its capabilities. First, taking a look at the overall layout of the screener module, which you can always access by clicking this icon right here, or if the menu is expanded by clicking the whole screener button right here. Let's go ahead and hide that once again. Uh, you can see we've got the data columns here on the left-hand side and the charting engine here on the right. We can always maximize or minimize the chart by clicking this and dragging it. And for now, let's go ahead and drag this all the way over to the right-hand side and focus on the data columns. The data columns are where the fundamental and technical data that is most important to you and your process is housed. And you can choose between dozens and dozens of different data columns to include in your column set. And in order to edit the data columns that you see in your DFU platform, as well as their location, what you want to do is go over here to the top right-hand corner, give this gear icon a click, and this brings out the column settings pop out. What you can do here is either use the folder system and basically check off the data columns that you'd like to select. And you have choices between really hundreds of different indicators, both fundamental as well as technical. Um, and you can go through that way, or you can also search for very specific criteria using this search bar right here. Uh, once you've got a criteria that you'd like to add, let's go ahead and use the earnings date as an example. Go ahead and check that box. It's automatically added to the top here, as well as over here on the left-hand side in real time. Uh, you can also go ahead and reorganize the columns by using this icon right here, clicking and then dragging. And you can see that the changes are automatically reflected over there on the right-hand side. Once you're satisfied with the way your data columns are set up, what you can do is go ahead and X out and you're ready to go and analyze your different stocks. One more aspect of DFU that I definitely want to showcase is the ability to sort as well as multi-sort to quickly go through a large list of screener results. So what you can do in DFU is go ahead and click any of the column headers of your uh, data columns and one click basically sorts it from lowest to highest you can see here we're sorting by weekly closing range and clicking it one more time sorts it from highest to lowest so now we've got 100 percent weekly closing ranges and clicking it one more time goes ahead and clears that sorting and this makes it really easy to be able to find outlier stocks uh, for instance if we want to see stocks with the highest relative volume today what we do is go to that data column give it a click once then again and you can see this stock sjr had the highest relative volume on a 20-day basis with a 6.17 here. And this brings me to one more point that I think DFU really excels at, and that is visualizations. So you can see next to this 6.17, there is a dot right here, and that signifies that this stock was moving on extremely large volume today. And you can see that happens for all these different stocks up to a certain point. Any relative volume of over 1.5 gets this special dot visualization. So you quickly know if you see that dot that that stock was moving on large volume. Uh, in addition to that visualization, you can see we've got the representation of a candle for both the weekly closing range and daily closing range, and also the last four candlesticks next to the volume right here. So just in this quick picture right here, we're looking at these four columns, even without looking at the chart and having it up, you can get a sense of what the volume has been like the past five days, whether the stock is moving on high volume, what the weekly closing range is, so how strong the stock has been over the course of that week, and looking at the daily closing range, how strong it's been on that day. So it's extremely powerful. And then of course, you've got the percent change on the day with another representation of the stock's performance. And getting back to the sorting, one more thing that you can do in Deep View is sort by multiple columns at once. So let's go ahead and clear the sorting. And one more way, other than clicking through the column header to clear the sorting, is to click this icon right here, whether the chart is out or not. Uh, clicking this tool right here clears the current sorting and resets it to sorting by the symbol. So sorting by the industry group, let's go ahead and click this once. We're now sorting from A to Z here. You can see advertising is first, then aerospace, and so on and so on. So what we can do now is sort by a secondary column and we can sort within these different industry groups. So let's go ahead and sort by daily and closing range. So now the first sort is based on industry group. Then the second sort is based on daily closing range. So here you've got two stocks in the advertising group. The first had a 75% closing range and the second had an 84%. Let's click this one more time to sort from high to low. 
and you can see now that 84 percent is higher than 75 percent and looking at the aerospace group this is a little bit more clear you can see as you go down these values these rows the daily closing range decreases as you go so there's a really helpful way to sort through a lot of stocks when you've got one column that is discrete values and then another that is more uh, continuous so i find that really helpful to sort through the results of my screens and this sorting capability is also available in the deep list module which we'll cover in a future video uh, let's go ahead and clear the sorting here so this resets everything and let's go ahead and bring back the chart and talk about that aspect of the screener so this setup where you've got your important data columns over here on the left hand side as well as the charting aspect allows you to take a look at uh, fundamental as well as technical data all on the same page very easily we've partnered with the industry leader at this point the trading view charting engine is what we're using and we've paired that with our data to bring you the best of both worlds and bring you high quality real-time data and you can essentially customize this layout however you wish you can go ahead and add many different indicators by clicking here let's go ahead and add macd let's go ahead and also add stochastic and you can add as many as you wish you can also reorganize them and let's go ahead and x those two out and you can even go ahead and use a multi time frame layout using this chart engine so let's go ahead and click this button right here select layout and choose this one you can see on the top now i've got a daily chart here i've got a weekly chart with different moving averages that i've set up previously and over here you've got an intraday 65 minute time frame and you can set this up so it best suits your own style and clicking this arrow right here you can even take a look at the earnings and sales data at the same time so this is extremely advanced capability you've got a multi time frame layout and you're coupling technical price action analysis with the fundamentals and you can hover over these and take a look at the actual data estimates surprise percentages and surprise dollar amounts for every earnings report and you've got access to a ton of different estimates as well uh, which is very rare for a retail platform uh, so you've got a really advanced setup here looking at both the technical price action as well as the key fundamentals so let's go ahead and minimize this and also bring back one time frame and move on now to the screener itself so first discussing the layout these are your tools right here for activating and selecting different screens you can see we've currently got this screen right here active a universe of ptmls potential true market leaders and we can go ahead and x out that screen and reset things so we're now looking at the full database of stocks and if at any time you want to select a screen that you've previously prepared or a preset what you can do is click this drop down arrow this brings up your saved screens so let's go ahead and load that back right here and you can also load different screener presets that we've pre-made for you looking at industry groups looking at different technical screens and definitely go through this entire list and uh, you know look at this for inspiration and you can also go ahead and duplicate these screens so you can go ahead and edit them and uh, build off them and use them as a foundation and when you do have a screen selected in order to edit the filters at any time you can go ahead and click this button right here and you can see i've got 10 filter criteria as a part of the screen and this brings out this filter pop out and very similar to the column uh, settings and data columns you can go through and search for criteria using the search bar or you can use the folder system here to choose any criteria you wish over here on the right side you can see the layout of the existing screen we've got group one which is mandatory criteria this is an and group and then group two which is an or group which means that the stock only needs to meet one of these four criteria in order to pass through this layer of the screen and this and or logic system where you've got mandatory criteria here and then an or group really allows you to get creative combine screens that are very similar criteria but just one differentiating factor for instance if you've got liquidity thresholds as well as you know a trend template uh, that you always want to see on your screens you put that in the and group here and then if you've got one additional thing that you're looking for for instance sales growth or earnings growth you can go ahead and combine that into one single screen which saves you time during your routines and allows you to go through uh, less stocks at the end of the day uh, as a part of your process uh, so just to summarize the and or logic and make it really clear uh, this group one is an and group here and that means in order for a stock to show up on the results of the screen every single one of these six criteria must be met 
and each layer must be satisfied for the stock to move on forward. Then when we get down to group two, this is an OR group, so things operate a little bit differently. In order for a stock to make it through this layer, this group here, and show up on the results, it only needs to meet one of these four criteria because this is an OR group. So it has to meet the EPS growth criteria, or the sales growth criteria, or be making a new high, or having strong one month RS. So uh, this allows you to mix and match different screens and get really creative with this. And you're able to add uh, multiple OR groups right here. And let's actually delete these here just to show how to add them. Uh, so to add an additional OR group, you can go ahead and click this button right here. And then to select this group, you go ahead and give it a click. So any criteria that you add, let's go to technical, WCR greater than 50%, click add. And now this is part of this group right here. You can see that changes are automatically reflected here on the right hand side. And if you'd like to uh, delete any other criteria you've added, go ahead and click this X here. And we can also delete this or group. Um, also in DFU, if you'd like to make changes to any single criteria that you've selected, go ahead and give that a click. This brings you right to that criteria and you can go ahead and make changes. Let's go ahead and say greater than $30 a share. And you can see those changes are reflected over here as well as in the results. So let's go ahead now and actually create a whole new screen to give one more example. So to do that, you go ahead and click this button right here. Uh, this brings out the create new screen pop out. And let's go ahead and look for a few different filters. Um, first, let's go ahead to uh, last price. Let's make that greater than $50 a share by typing in here 50, click add. Uh, there we go. That is the first filter. Let's also search for um, average dollar volume. Give that a click. And let's go ahead and make the 20 day average dollar volume greater than, let's say, 10 million and add that. So now that we've got this criteria, let's go ahead and add an or group to our filter system. Go ahead and select it by clicking this. Uh, if you don't click this, any additional criteria, even though you've added that group, will be in the group that's currently selected, which was here. So here we've selected the and group. And now let's go ahead and select the or group. And let's go ahead and add earnings and sales by typing in EPS, EPS growth percentage. Let's go ahead and make that greater than 40. Click add. And let's add a similar one for sales growth here. And let's say uh, two quarters ago, and you've got a lot of options here, as you can see, as well as going over to the estimates, you can go ahead and uh, go forward quite a ways here. Um, so let's go ahead back to the sales growth two quarters ago, greater than 40%. Clicking add, there you go. So this is our example screen here. And the last thing that you'd wanna do after you're satisfied with the criteria is click save screen. And let's go ahead and name this tutorial screener. And you can select a folder to save it to if you would like, but let's go ahead and just click save. So now that screen is set and you can see we now have the default column layout. So in order to set the column layout that corresponds with the screen, you go ahead and click this gear icon one more time and select the column layout that you'd like to use with the screen. So we'll go ahead and use the fundamental data screen and X out. So there you go. You've now got a new screen loaded here in deep view. And once again, if you want to quickly choose and go through many different screens, you just have to select them both presets as well as your save screens. And that's pretty much it when it comes to deep view. Um, as you go through results, if you do want to add uh, different symbols to, for instance, a watch list, what you can do is use the bulk options here on the left hand side. And once you've selected stocks to add to your watch list, what you do is either copy to clipboard if you want to share them on Twitter, or you can click add to, and then you'd add them to a particular watch list or even create a new deep list right here from the screeners. So that's a run through of the capabilities of the screener platform. Uh, let us know if you have any questions down below, and I'll see you guys in future videos. Take care.